carving table that's right on the stage. I'm giving this thing some love. Oh, man. If you're friends with me, or if you happen to work or live nearby, you will find yourself doing a lot of unexpected physical labor. Well, I guess at some point you start to expect it. But anyway, thank you, and I promise to bake you some cookies. Yeah. I really appreciate it. Recently, I was invited to exhibit at the French Legation Museum, the oldest house in Austin, Texas. It had been a while since I'd been there, so I decided to walk around the grounds to get an idea for what I wanted to make. Because of the size of the space, I knew that whatever I made would have to be really large in order to be seen at all. That day it was cold and raining, and I had my umbrella with me. I started to imagine all the people that have been there over the years doing the same thing I was doing. It gave me a feeling of timelessness, which was actually really comforting. I wanted to make something that stood out, but also looked like it belonged there, or that it could have belonged to any time period since the house was made. By the time I left, I knew I wanted to make a life-size figure and that I wanted to incorporate the rain. I used the big saw to get rid of as much material as I could while leaving plenty to work with. Pretty soon I switched to the smaller saw with a 12 inch carving bar to really shape the wood. Actually, I didn't remove that much material overall and ended up using most of the log for the carving. I've been having a lot of unexpected problems with my equipment on this piece. First, I broke my carving table. With the original log, I had to cut the end off of it and attach the wooden base. It collapsed my table like under the weight of it. And then yesterday, while I was carving, I snapped my first chain. Like for the first time, my chain actually just broke in the middle of the carving. And then today, my angle grinder, it's actually like worn through the metal. I've had it in the past where this is torn and flown off with such force, it's actually cut me through several layers of clothing and bruised me really badly. I can't mess with it anymore, I'm not, I don't trust it. So I'm just gonna have to finish it without it. And I think that if some of the chainsaw texture shows, it's kind of interesting and it hopefully won't take away from the piece. I use the Dremel on the face, the hands, and the buttons. The Dremel got me. <laughs> it's better than a chainsaw, though. I used a map gas torch to burn crevices and create shadows. It's taking a long time. <laughs> There's a lot of area to cover. Then I used the flap sander to smooth everything out before I sealed it and called it good. I know the title is a cliche, but the moment I heard it, it wouldn't leave my brain. It's appropriate for both the image and the process of making it, with everything going wrong at the same time. You know, but it's also a term for abundance in general, and this is a happy piece. There's always a lot of bad and a lot of good all around us all the time. It's our attitudes that determine what we're gonna pay attention to. Even when I'm breaking all my tools, dremeling my hand and just getting like physically wiped out from what I do, I feel so fortunate to have the opportunity to do it and for all the support 
and the heavy lifting that the people in my world have contributed. When it rains, it pours. If you found this process video interesting, click on the sculpture to subscribe. Thank you.